What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Crazy. Unbelievable. Me getting a little bit more, a little bit more light here. A little bit more light. Here we go. I'm going to put my sunglasses on. There we go. I'm outside. I mean, what a nightmare. I mean, I, but this, you know, if this isn't the 2021 Yankees personified, leave it to the very last game of the season, right? To, to absolutely have to win. Now, Toronto's winning right now. And Boston is not playing. Oh, they they just started against Washington. But like Toronto has Baltimore, Boston has Washington. Like these guys are facing the worst teams in baseball. And the Yankees have the best team in the American League to contest with. Like it could not get any more ridiculous. I mean, it couldn't. It just, it, it just couldn't. Like, but you know, twelve to two, just pounding. I mean, they yeah, Shane Baz a brick. Tampa Bay owning the Yankees this year. The Yankees played relatively well against them early in the season, but now forget about it. It's just unbelievable, and it's it's absolute nightmare. I just, <clears throat> but again, this is the Yankees for 2021. Leave it to the very last day tomorrow to absolutely have to win. If they win, they're in, you know. And, and if Toronto somehow loses, they look like they're going to lose, or if Boston somehow loses, they're in as well. So, but. We'll see. We'll see what Boston does. They play in Washington. Toronto's up, but they were up like six one. So I don't see them coming back. Yet. I don't see Baltimore coming back against Toronto. So, uh, so he went like two and two thirds. So uh, it's rough, man. Really, really rough. Um, before I go any further, I want to give a special shout out to Jeff J and Taz Bolgado Pedro. They they gave the uh, the first two donos to the channel. On our last live stream, the fir very first, the first and second donos, and I appreciate you both. So I want to give a special shout out to both of you, and uh, donos are really, really greatly appreciated and really helpful. So, and um, but back to it. I mean, like this is this is like it's it's pure insanity. It's pure insanity. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move to the other side because there's a lot of glare and it's blocking my view to seeing you guys give me your feedback here. So let's get here. You might not see me as much here, but at least I can see the comments now. Okay. A little bit more. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just getting to a – oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. You have a little shadow here for me, but I want to be able to see you guys and giving your feedback. But, yeah, man, it's just – it's it's ridiculous, man. It is ridiculous. And my, I mean, Monty has been good. He has been good. He's been good against the Rays. He's been good against, you know, good against the Rays all year. And he just happened to pick the worst day, the worst day to, the worst day to stink against the Rays. The absolute worst day to stink against the Rays. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate, man. This is bolt. There's a boatload of sun glare here. Oh, boatload of sun glare. There we go. This is better. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, man. And what can you say? I mean, you know, he, he, he has, this is his resurgence season with the Yankees and he's gone almost, you know, upwards of 160 innings or stuff. So this is the most he's pitched with the Yankees for, I mean, for two, three years now. So a lot of credit. I mean, you know, he's built his way back and he's two or three years removed from Tommy John now. And, um, but it, you know, it just wasn't meant to be today. And again, this is typical Yankees of 2021, right? Leave it until the very last day to have to win. I mean, and again, you know, <laughs> the way that they played this year, the notorious streak and just not playing good against teams like Baltimore and these other teams, they put themselves in a position to have to be here. You know, it shouldn't be, you know, uh, Boston and Toronto playing the worst teams in baseball and Yankees having to survive and try to eke, eke out a win against the best team in the American League for dear life. Like, it's just, it's nuts. Um, Chris, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do live streams in the offseason. I have a lot of content I'm working on. I'll put out videos, several videos per week, and um, I'm going to do boatloads of live streams as well. Because I want to talk about offseason. I want to talk about, because we have the winter meetings coming up. We have the... Uh, the new CBA coming up. I want to know what the Yankees are going to be doing and, and all that stuff. And I'm going to give my trade predictions, my free agent predictions and all that stuff. And, um, Oh, uh, Sean, thank you, man. Love. I appreciate you, brother. Don't know from Sean, 499. Let's get some love to Sean, man. Thank you very, very much, man. I appreciate you, man. You're the man, dude. You're the man. I, yeah, I love it. Thank you for supporting the channel, man. I want to continue to make it better, but yeah, I'll be doing live streams all off season. 
and the goal is to make the channel as you know as good as possible. So, and any donos will be used to make the channel better. So, and um, but Sean Chester, man, thank you, bro. Thank you very much. And uh, dono hype, baby. Yeah, let's give a W, man. A W to Sean Chester, man. Big Ws, big Ws, baby. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. And um, so yeah, I mean, the, the Yankees are in. They put themselves in this position, and it's a combination of like, you know bad managing and coaching and, and, and just bad performance that are not necessarily influenced that much by managing and coaching. Right. And it's, 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 it's a whole bunch of things. It really is a whole bunch of things. And here we go. Better angle. Now you can see me. And, um, ah, oh, you Elvis. Thank you, man. Don't big shout out to you Elvis too, for the dono, man. I appreciate you as well, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And look, you Elvis says, if we lose tomorrow, I don't see us winning two games straight. Just my opinion. Well, your opinion makes a uh, a lot of sense. It really does. I and mean, if they lose tomorrow, then obviously there's going to be some kind of tie, and they have to play game 163. So, you know, if they win tomorrow, they're in. If and only if Toronto loses today or Boston loses today, even if the Yankees lose, now it's a matter of them being in or getting home field advantage. It's a it's it's one or the other. Right. So, and, but again, like all the things are almost falling into place for there to be a three way tie here. It's like unbelievable. But if it wasn't, again, this is like, it's so freaky, 2021 Yankee season. <laughs> it keeps happening. It's like, what the hell is going on? But again, 13 game winning streak, then they lose like 18 out of 20, then they win seven straight. And then, like, you know, DJ now he needs groin surgery this offseason. It's, it's completely nuts. And why didn't they call up Andrew Velasquez a week ago? Like, and, and again, you know, why are they playing Odor once every three weeks when he, he hits better, when he's consistent? You know, and I do feel that Voight's probably played his last game as a Yankee, unfortunately. And they might have to, they might have to designate him or I don't think they're going to get much in, in return in the trade. I really don't, man. And it's unfortunate at this point. They could have traded him for a, a, a massive haul this offseason, but they didn't. So, and this is where the Yankees, you know, don't, aren't that good. And capitalizing on stuff like that when guys are at their high value and just this is where the Yankees have a lot to, a lot to improve on in development and 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 scouting and you know utilizing models like Tampa Bay where they they do a really good job of just building the foundation within and and uh, with a low payroll and stuff and they're more efficient with their scouting and development than the Yankees have been even though Cashman's kind of resurrected the system and the farm has been much better recently still a lot to be desired, man. And they're going to have to make a lot of, a lot of moves this off season. They really, really are. Um, but you're right. I mean, I mean, you know, West end Jordan sucked today, man. Thinking of Jordan's too. I mean, what my gut telling me, uh, but my gut's telling me they're probably going to wind up losing tomorrow and they're going to have to, and I don't know who's going to be on the mound yet either. Um, if it's Cole on the mound, then I feel confident. If it's not Cole, then I don't. Um, and I think Cole Jennings generally does a good job at resurrecting himself or revitalizing himself after a bad outing. He generally doesn't have two bad outings in a row. So, um, I could see him pitching well, but I could see him being, you know, him going five and then bringing in Severino and, and, and some of these other guys, that's the way it would have to be. That way you can come, Cole can come back a few days later instead of having him throw seven or whatever. You got to put them in the best position to win, man. They really, really do. But honestly, like Heaney, <laughs> That, I hope that's a joke, man. I really hope that's a joke. And that better. Not, <laughs> I think it's going to be Tyone. I mean, they brought it back up, so I mean, I think it'll be Tyone over Heaney. I mean, Heaney's already been designated, so he, he would have to be recalled in order for that to happen. So I don't know who they're going to send down for freaking Andrew Heaney. No, that's a good one. <laughs> and I, I don't want to use Cole either. I'd rather use Cole in the wild card game. So uh, I, my guess, Tyone's probably going to be the starter. And then they'll go, maybe he may go four innings or so. And then you have Severino and then you have some other guys, maybe Herman, since he didn't pitch today. And, you know, Herman needs a couple more reps to kind of get back into a groove too. So, um, but I mean, right now I mean, it's do or die tomorrow, no matter what. So maybe Cole will come out of the bullpen. You never know. But then again, that would probably mean he won't start the wild card game if the Yankees are running. And, and I, only scenario where I would see Cole, Cole coming out of the bullpen would be if, if it's a close game and they're winning or whatnot. They absolutely need to shut this down. So, but that's the other thing too is when's the is the wild card game on Tuesday? In which case it would be a day right between tomorrow. I think it's Tuesday, but I'm just hoping that Boston loses today. 
against the Nationals. And, I, you know, I, what are you going to do? Seattle's already lost last night, so that they're, they're kind of clicked off. Um, but Boston has to lose today. Or, I mean, either Boston or Toronto has to lose tomorrow. And so – and that's the that's that's the thing that sucks. They're like we're relying on other teams to lose because we're not confident that our own team's going to win, and that really sucks. It really does. So, yeah, daily it does say t- yeah to be determined. I think I mean, it sounds as if it's going to be tie on daily dose, but I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent until they announce it. I mean, it's it's up in the air, man. It really is up in the air. But personally, I would rather use Cole for the wild card game. Um, I mean, that's just you know that's the other do or die. So. And that determines whether they go to the divisional series. And at least the divisional series, it's a five game series. So I mean, if you, it doesn't matter if you win the first game, it, you know, and that would be against Tampa. So if they won one out of two of those games, I'd be okay with it. If they start Nestor and then, or someone like that, I mean, I feel a little bit better about that. Um, so 163rd game is Monday. If it goes that, yeah. I mean, if it's, yeah, if it's the tiebreaker game, ugh. Yeah, this is the thing, like, Brett. I mean, like, we had a hard time beating the Orioles this year. It's, it's uh, like the Orioles, man. We were 11 and 8 against them. We should have been, like, you know, 16 and 3 or something like that. But the Orioles played. Well, Tyon, it's it's up in the air. I mean, he left the other day with his ankle bothering him, but they said he feels like, they feels a lot better. So if he comes in, I'm guessing it's probably going to be, Peter, probably three innings or four innings tops before they go over to Severino. I mean, that's, that's my gut, but I could be wrong, man. I could be wrong. So, bullpen game and sending the wise again. Home switch. Yeah, I mean, that could happen too. Daily, it could absolutely happen. I mean, they could bullpen it. I mean, and you're going to have to use them two trainings each. King will have to come back out. I mean, I mean, just all hands on deck tomorrow. It's, I mean, and again, they cannot rely on Boston or Toronto to lose. They have to win. And it's this is where it's so freaking frustrating, man. It's my God, and it is. It just sucks the energy out of the room. Dial T- Tampa's already won. Yesterday was a winnable game. Today was an ass kicking. So I didn't think it was a winnable game. But Yankees could have already, you know, shut this out. I mean, Yankees need to trade Stanton or Judge to rebound and, ju- and Judge to rebound. Well, I th- well, I mean, it's pot. Anything's possible, but you know. Stanton's on a big contract. Judge has a year left, and he's going to be on a big contract. I mean, trading both of them, I, I, the only scenario where I see that happening is if the National League adopts the DH, which opens up 15 more spots for a guy like Stanton and even Judge. So, But, I, I mean, personally, if it happens, and it seems like a pipe dream now because they've been so good. The only teams I see Judge are going to are the West Coast teams like the Mariners and the Angels. Stanton, I think there's a little bit more of a – a little bit more of an opportunity there, but they're both from the West Coast, so I could see, I could also see Stanton going up since he's already under contract. You know, he could go to the Mariners too, and you know, could you imagine if they both trade to the Mariners for like a, a Hall of Prospects? That would be insane. I can't see it happening, but it would be absolutely insane. Or both trade to the Angels, like my God, add those two guys to Otani and Trout. I mean, that's just modern day murderers row, murderers row, and Torres. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. Hit or miss with Torres too. He's either hot or he's cold. He's just, it's, it's it's too many mental errors and too many too many things. But I, I'm a, I'm kind of on the mentality with daily dose too. The Yankees don't need to do a full rebuild. I think a reshuffling, yes. Getting more effect, efficient in certain areas, yes. You know, I like that Rizzo hit that, that that home run today. It was a good piece of offense. I mean, that was good to see, and a couple of hits. But aside from that, being that's only an offense. And again, my gut tells me now with DJ needing groin surgery that he's probably going to be moved. And listen, I've been saying this recently, but about them, them moving DJ to first base because his mobility isn't as good. And this could be a reason why. So if they let Rizzo walk and they let they they move on from Voight in a trade or designate, that opens up first base for a guy like DJ. And he won't have to run around the field. I mean, it, it, you know, it would be less taxing on his – older, less athletic legs, especially when coming off a of surgery. So don't be surprised if you see him at first base. Um, and this just, I think to me, increases the odds of something like that actually happening. But nevertheless, they're still going to uh, invest in a multi-position player for the infield. Um, you know, as much as I like Velasquez and Wade, I mean, getting somebody like an Eduardo, uh, 
Escobar or I mean, Keita Marte would be Keita Marte would be perfect because he plays into that now, so he could be kind of the, the Ben Zobrist and the Yankees. But I don't know if that's going to happen. I really don't. I really don't. All right. It's, at this point, at this point, I don't know, man. I really don't know. And uh, Stanton only wanted New York or LA. Yeah, and he actually vetoed, I think, a trade to the Dodgers. Stanton, so and I don't know why. Um, I really don't. Um, but who knows? I mean, if the Dodgers. I mean, if, again, if DH happens in the National League, he could be a good fit for the Dodgers. He could be. He really could be. Um, and you know, I, I would not be surprised. I mean, they're not afraid to spend. They're a star-studded team. He's a star. So, and and, and oh God. Toronto's up 10-1 now, so yeah, so I can't see Toronto losing. Uh, so hopefully the Nationals, who are who are sending out jo- Josiah Gray, who's one of the their stud Dodgers prospects that was sent over to the Nationals and trade from Max Scherzer. So, so rooting for the Nationals right now. Let's go Nationals today, really. But yeah, four hits. I mean, it's just... This is the thing, and that's not all Aaron Boone. That's not all. That's not all Marcus Timms. Like it's you know, Marcus Timms does bear responsibility because he's the hitting coach. But like Judge didn't do anything. Stanton didn't do anything. Like the Boppers didn't do anything. Gallo didn't really. I mean, Gallo got that opposite field hit, but okay. But our big bats didn't come up. You know, they didn't come up. So, and that's you know, it was an all around crappy performance for the team today. Unfortunately, it really was. And um, just the whole team, just flat, you know, lethargic and just sloppy and getting beat by clearly a better team. And Matt, you know, just keep in mind, if they win the wild card and they win the wild card game, they're coming right back to play these game, Tampa again. So and they're going to have to really, really change some things around and have a shot at beating freaking Tampa. They look good, man. They can win, again, short, close games. They win long games. They win all types of baseball games. And that's the sign of a championship caliber team, you know. It's what the Dodgers do. It's what the Giants have been doing this year. Tampa Bay is repeatedly. I mean, that's why they're kind of, you know, perennial World Series contenders every year now. Took them a long time to get here, but they're here now, you know? You know, San Francisco is about to, yeah, yeah. They have 100-plus wins already. I think the Dodgers have 100-plus wins. Today was Tampa Bay's 100th win, which I think might be the first time they won 100 games. So it's just, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. And... Brett, yeah, I mean, this is the thing with analytics. And it's like, analytics isn't going to guarantee, doesn't guarantee championships, doesn't guarantee wins. And it's a combination of analytics and fundamental baseball and experience and instincts and, and, and a whole bunch of things and energies and, 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 and you know, just good coaching, good player development. There's, it's got Everything's got to be, you know, falling into place at the same time. So it's not only analytics. But it's not devoid of analytics either. And again, analytics does play a, a key role. So we ha- that has to be acknowledged. So, but yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. That's what I mean too. Like you all this, you're right. Give the team a chance to come back. Like we have to keep, our pitchers have to keep the, you know, keep us in the game. And the hitters have to keep us in the game when the pitchers don't do it. And that's a balanced attack. And that's, we don't have that this year for the most part. It's either one or the other. And Tampa Bay has both. On the regular, that's why they're so good. So do the Giants and teams like that. I mean, could you? I didn't think the Padres were going to miss the playoffs, but they did. I mean, and it goes to show you, like, you know, and it doesn't. It didn't help, like, um, not having Mike Clevenger. But that, I mean, they acquired all these aces, and they didn't all come up aces. It's just there's no guarantee in that type of stuff, right? And they have all these bats, but they're still bereft of like Adam Frazier did not work out for San Diego that trade. He has another year, I think, next year. So I think. Or is he a free agent? He might have one more year, actually. Um, the trade didn't work out for, for the for the for the Padres. So unfortunately, right? And and it's it is what it is. And, you know, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, it turns out better for them. And they have Mike Clevenger back next year. And you know, and just but you know, look, they ran up against a brick wall in San Francisco. San Francisco. And did, did any of us ever think they would have a year that they've had this year? I I didn't. But they're freaking magical this year. Magical. So, um, yeah, absolutely, Daily Dose. Analytics don't say we're doing – yeah, of course. When there's 12 to 2, of course, absolutely, 100%. It's just three uh, – there's a three-way tie. Then Yankees have to play 163rd game. Um, I think there might be an additional game. It's A three-way tie is going to be a nightmare for the Yankees at that point. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember – scenario 
But the three-way tie, if the Yankees lose tomorrow and the other teams win, then it's a three-way tie. So I'm hoping that. Yeah, so one more. Yeah, exactly, Daily Dose. Thank you. One more year and Adam Frage is a free agent. I think he would have been the right fit for the Yankees instead of for the Padres. But the Padres jumped in and got him because they were, at that time, they were right in the thick of it. And then, and, you know, and then, and like they, like they realized too, like, yo, we got to close the gap to the, to the, to the freaking Giants here. And that's why they, I think the Dodgers made that trade. Neither one of them closed the gap to the Giants. But they, you know, they got better. Giant, the Dodgers definitely got better with uh, Scherzer and freaking Trey Turner. So, but it's just crazy. So, three way tie, Billy. Boston plays Toronto and Boston. Winner in the wild card, and it will be a home team. Loser plays Yankees. Winner goes to Boston. That's right. That's right. Good. Thank you, Billy. That's right. Loser plays in the Bronx. Winner goes to Boston. That's right. It was something like that. Thank you for clarifying it. Trade Voight and Torres and call it Dominguez. Yeah, would be, would be nice. He ain't ready yet. I don't think he'll be ready until after 2023. But uh, they need to have, you know, give some young guys some opportunities next year or so. And there's a good chance that Torres might be moved. But I, I mean, I don't think it's as good a chance that I think Voight's going to be more likely gone than Torres. Um, but Boston's winning one nothing already. Wonderful. It's, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's just the, 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 everything's just falling into place. You know, Brian Reynolds is interested in extending his contract with the Pirates, and he's already he's not a free agent until 2026. So he's got four years. And again, in fact, the Yankees, I'd be all over him. He, that's the guy you offer a monster package for. That's the guy you offer. Mm-hmm. He's the guy, Brian Reynolds, man. It's, but nevertheless, it's they need more than Brian Reynolds. That's for sure. Yankees. I mean, it's just, and again, well, that's, you know, Daryl, I mean, like after I, my, I've, my, and I've said this like a hundred times, so I've always was nervous about the rotation after Cole. Right. Um, I'm like, I knew Montgomery, Montgomery had, you know, solid year and deceptive numbers, but a solid year. And, but that said, you know, he, he, he's pitched more innings than he's pitched in, in, in since Tommy John. And so is, so is Jamison Tyon. They've both pitched the most innings that they pitched in years. So, and, you know, at that point, like, they were going to start to kind of break down at some point or, 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 you know, get gassed. So I think it's a combination of things. But this is why I keep saying the Yankees need to get two free agent starters this offseason, either two in free agency or one in free agency and one in the trade. Nevertheless, they need two free agent starters. I am not depending on Severino um, in the rotation to just be the Severino of old, which was only one season, by the way, one dominant season. So that's why another reason why I'm not depending on him. And he had to get freaking Tommy John the following season. So I'm not depending on that. I'm not. That's why they need. I mean, if they can get Ray and Rodon, that would be awesome. Or you know, Rodon and, and someone in a trade, Castillo, or something like that. Or Ray and someone in a trade. Two starters is an absolute must for the Yankees this offseason. No doubt about it. And you know, but yeah, I mean, I it's just and they need to. They need another reliever as well. I'm trying to get this glare out of my face. Um, they need another reliever as well, and another reliable one. I mean, that's why I, w- I would go after like Ray Sil Iglesias from the Angels. I mean, um, somebody like that, somebody like that, another, another power arm to complement the, the arms that we already have. Um, just need a reliable, you know. But yeah, definitely two starting pitchers, a multi-position player, like, kind of like a Brian Reynolds or or, or a Ketel Marte. Um, and then you know, I my gut's telling me that. Cashman's obviously, and he's kind of alluded to it already that he wants um, Aaron Hicks to be the, um, the center fielder. So now, do they move on from Gardner? I don't know. Does he bring back Gardner? Because he loves Gardner too, but he's an Aaron Hicks guy. So what the hell is he going to do? That's that's the thing. Like, well, what's Cashman going to do at this point? And uh, you know, I, if there's any way that they could get a Ktel Marte or or Brian Reynolds, they have to do it. They have to. It's just, and again, Hicks has five more years of his contract. I mean, Stanton has six more in his contract. So it's, you know, I mean, if Hicks, come, if Hicks comes back healthy and he, and he produces well being a switch hitter, okay, his, his contract becomes a little bit of a steal because it's $10 million a year and not 25 a year. But nevertheless, even so, I mean, he, he's, I can't, can't, you know, he's coming off wrist surgery and he needs, he needs his wrist as a hitter. Like, 
<laughs> you know, these are things that he needs, levers of his body that he needs. And it's just, these are the types of things. And, and this is where it's like, oh my God, what the freaking hell? And, and, you know, and these are the things that Cashman's talking about. And, you know, and, and again, he's a Hicks guy. He's also a, a Gardner guy. But, I mean, will he say no to a, um, you know, to a Ketel Marte trade or Brian Reynolds trade? He'd be nuts. Um, but again, I mean, you know, it depends on what they, what he'd have to give up, but it's going to be a lot regardless. Um, and, um, you know, Luis Castillo would be great. Honestly, Luis Castillo, from, and I've mentioned him several times. They actually turned down a straight up Glaber Torres for Luis Castillo trade this off season. Cashman said no to it. And, um, and they might be kicking themselves in the foot now, but like Castillo and Crodone, would be phenomenal. Castillo and Ray would be a great would be a great pairing to add to this rotation. We need Cole needs a one B, right, or a legit front line number two to complement him, like he had in on Houston with uh, Justin Verlander. And again, a pitcher of that caliber, they make each other better. It can't be like a mile between him and the rest of the rotation. So we can't. We just can't. It can't be that way. We need another arm to to lighten the load on the Cole, so that he's not always in these high leverage situations all the time. So and that's why we need it. Um, um, too large. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I mean, Daryl. Exactly. We don't need more hulks. Like that's why Adam Frazier would have been a great fit, or Brian Reynolds would be a great fit, or Ktel. Normal-looking guys. They're athletic. Again, switch hitters play multiple positions. All three of those guys, and and gives the lineup so much more versatility. It gives Boone, if he's still here, options. And the Yankees need more options. And you know. Torres for Ketel Martin Galwads. Yeah, it's gonna cost. I like the I like the idea. I I, I, I think Zach Gallon would be a nice addition. He's young too, but it's gonna to cost Torres and Peraza and, and freaking Luis Medina. It's gonna cost a lot more than Torres to get Ketel Martin, even straight up. It's gonna cost more. So um you know, I but that's an intriguing trade with the Diamondbacks. I mean, you know, and the Yankees have been known to do trades, particularly two three team trades with the Diamondbacks. That's how they got Didi. You know, and that's how Max Scherzer was moved. And, like, they got, uh, if I remember correctly, DD came to the Yankees from Arizona straight. Did you go from Detroit to Arizona? I don't remember. From Arizona to Detroit, I think it was. Arizona to Detroit. So, it was, that, I mean, that trade, I don't remember all the details, but that Scherzer was moved in one of these three-team trades as well. So, we're, all, I'm at 50, we're almost at 50 on here. Man. That's awesome, man. I want to get to 100 people on here at some point. And, and again, I appreciate the donos, man. Really, really helpful. Appreciate them. Severino... I, Gerald, my concern is his durability. At this point, come back from Tommy John. He looks really good right now as a reliever, but that's where personally I would keep him. I would bring in two starters, durable starters, and then put keep him in the bullpen as a long relief guy because my fear is that he'll come back to the rotation, even though they're probably going to gradually build him up, and he gets hurt again. And I would rather use his bullets. And even though he's dominant – at times, but generally when a team sees him for the third time, they start to hit him. And he's one of these guys too, that has like one bad inning and gets rocked and you know, it happens too. And, um, but I would rather see his bullets be, be tossed in three innings, three inning or four inning blocks and then get out of there and bring, you know, to the next guy personally. I think he's best used at this point, you know, uh, in the bullpen instead of rotation, especially being almost three years away from the rotation. So, um, Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, Gerald. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, Glaber's not – his trade value is not very high right now, and neither is Voight's. Like, there's no way we're going to get Ketel Marte for – it's going to cost Glaber plus two or three guys to get a Ketel Marte. Would I move him for Marte? Yes, I would. Because they still have Velasquez. They still have other guys. And if you move DJ to first, then you have an opportunity to bring up somebody like an Oswald Peraza or they have another guy up. But I wouldn't bring – I wouldn't rush Volpe up. Let him continue to develop and, and perform well at AAA before we bring him up. Um, I don't want to ruin that kid. He looks he looks special. He really does. So, um, they can clean. Yeah, I mean, Glaber's been better at second, so if they don't move him, I, you know, I would be fine. Like, if they didn't move him in the trade. And again, I don't think they can get a lot of value back from him anyway. So, that's the problem. It's, you know, that's the frustrating part. That's the frustrating part, man. So, Franchise, yeah, I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. You guys make the streams great, man. You really do. And again, I feed off of other guys too, like Derek Lewandowski over in NYRA Recaps. He's a great channel. If you haven't seen him, take a look at him. Him and I do stuff together. We trade off things, and um, it's one of my favorite channels out there as well. And uh, but I appreciate the appreciate that love, franchise, man. Definitely appreciate it. 
You guys make me want to make the stream better. So, and I'm going to figure out a way to make it work all the time. So, Gio can play short and third. You know, he's got, he's got, he definitely has better range than Glaber does at shortstop. He does. So he's fine at third to me. If they, if they keep him at third, fine. You know, and, and if they move DJ to first and Torres to second, then shortstop's opened up. So, what do they do there? I don't know. But at least they have some options that are close, like Oswald Peraza. So, um, um, but yeah, who has done his for 2021, it was, uh, 11 or $12 million. It was a pretty big one. So I don't see him coming back. And, uh, Frank, I don't know, man, I'm 50, 50. On, I think they're going to probably go like daily does say, I think they might bullpen tomorrow and save Cole for the wild card game just to be, <clears throat> you know, it's risky, but that's what I think they're probably, that's how I think they're going to probably roll the dice to try to hopefully gut through this game tomorrow and then have Cole ready for the wild card game. And that's what I think they're going to do. So, so I agree with Daly there. Strowman could be, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's durable I and, mean, you know, and whatnot. Um, not a power arm, but I think he could be. Could be an option, sure. He'd probably get more than a one-year deal too, um, at least two. Yeah, and Steven, 100%, man. They definitely stopped me. These Pankers against Boston and Toronto, like they just, but they, again, they dug this hole for themselves, and now, they, now they're now they like scrambling trying to get out of it, which is unfortunate. So, um, Daily, 100%. The Yankees community is a huge community, too, on YouTube. It, it really is. I mean, we have, the Yankee fans are like the best fans in the world, man. Best baseball fans in the whole world. They're knowledgeable, passionate, and like, and look at all the stuff we have on here. We just have, you know, amazing stuff from you folks, and it's just, that's so much fun doing these live streams with you guys. You know, that's why I'm really, that's why it's, that's why I have so much fun doing it. And again, I, I love talking to you guys. So, um, franchise. Yeah, man, Derek does good stuff, man. He really, really does. And, uh, you know, I enjoy doing stuff with him. I really do. Sanchez could be moved. Um, he's got one year left. I mean, you know, again, I, I mentioned Wilson Contreras as an option. He's got one year left too from the Cubs, and I would, I would definitely welcome the opportunity to bring in a Wilson Contreras. I would, I really, really would. Um, Posey to buy time for Austin Wells, maybe. Gerald, I mean, he's going to cost some money, but I'm not sure if the Giants are going to let him go either. But well, I mean, anything possible. I mean, he's a free agent. Chris Bryant's a free agent, so I, he'd probably get a qualifying offer to Posey. That's for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, we just need reliable, versatile, athletic position players. You know, they don't necessarily have to be big boppers, just reliable players that get on base and do the, do the, just do the little things and the routine things. Like we need more of that stuff. We just need more productivity from this team. We really, really do. And, um, they're talking about moving him to first base. That's what I've heard the same thing, Brett, because they're saying his body type doesn't profile well as a catcher long term. So, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that talk too. And he's got a good bat, Austin Wells. He does, he does have a good bat. So I, I, I enjoy. I, you know, he's fun to watch. A lot of these Yankees prospects recently are fun to watch. Trey Sweeney, Martian, you know, Peraza, and a bunch of the other ones. Luis Hill, I enjoy too. So, um. Yeah, well, yeah, I give DJ's got, you know, he's a gamer, Peter. So anybody willing to play hurt like that is a gamer. So, but this is where, like, this is where the, this is why I keep saying the Yankees need good depth so that <clears throat> if something like this happens, <coughs> they have somebody they can rely on, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> in their place. And they don't, they have suspect depth. So, <clears throat> you know, even at first base, Rizzo and Voigt, okay, Rizzo's great defensively. Voight was great offensively. Rizzo provided good offense today, but <clears throat> what do you they're likely both not going to be back next year because I think DJ, <clears throat> unless they make a trade for – the allergies are killing me. Unless they make a trade for uh, a Matt Olsen or, or somebody like that, I can see DJ first base. Everson per Pereira, that's another one. He's very un underrated, Daly. He's a good-looking prospect too. <clears throat> another position player. Um. Yankees have a lot of good position players. So, and, and again, they need, and this is where like they need to give kids opportunities. And even some of their starters, like, I mean, they kind of screwed things up at Luke Ford, even though he's injury prone. Like they didn't put him in a position to succeed. Like, and they did the same thing with Odor. Like once they made trades, they stopped playing him. He, you know, he carried the team for like two months, Odor. So not a sexy name, but he carried them. And, and 
<clears throat> playing them once every three weeks is really, really hard to do when you're going up against these guys that throw that hard. So it's really, really hard. And um, uh, same thing, Brett. If, if Zunino doesn't exercise his option, he does not exercise his option. <clears throat> um, well, I could see them getting a qualifying offer, which he might take, but I would be all over Zunino, all over him. You know? I don't know, Chris. I mean, I, I think they would trade him more than Matt Chapman because Olsen's value is higher. And again, they're not in the business of, and they have two more. And I said the other day, one year, he has two years of free, until free agency. Um, <clears throat> Olsen and Chapman, but um, they're not in the business of re signing their players to big contracts. So at some point, they trade them or they move on and they give qualifying offers and they just kind of rinse, recycle, and repeat. So this is the time to take advantage of that and restock, restock things because. He's worth a lot. I mean, he'll get a haul back. So will Chapman, but not as big as Olsen. And again, two years of those guys before free agency is his gold. You know, if the Yankees can get Olsen, I, I would have him at first base any day of the week, just hitting bombs. And again, he's a combination of these guys. He's got the, the, the defensive prowess of Rizzo, the offensive performance of like a Tino and, 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 and Voight when he's healthy. So he's a combination of both. He's one of the best first basemen in baseball. And the Yankees are generally used to having a stud first baseman. So... And, you know, Tex was – I liked Tex. I loved I liked Tino, and I loved Don Mattingly, but Yankees need that, that next guy in first base. Matt Olsen seems to represent that guy. If they can p actually get him, it would be crazy good. be crazy. So – but I don't know. And that's the thing. I, I – and I, and I do agree, Brett. I think it makes too much sense for the – for the race, like they have to exercise this option. It's not a big option. And like, why the hell would they not do it? Kevin Kiermaier is the highest paid guy in the team. And I think he makes like 11 or 12 million. So it's too, it's too sensible to not to do it. <clears throat> so I, I see them exercising the option too. So they'd be crazy not to, people would be lining up for him if they didn't do that. <clears throat> they really would be, there would be teams lining up for the guy. So <clears throat> they chose Sanchez. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, Gerald Sanchez over Girardi. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I wonder if the Yankees are kicking themselves in the foot now for certain decisions that they made or didn't make over the last decade, almost almost decade. So, but there's no guarantee that if Girardi was here that they'd be, you know, they would have won uh, another World Series. He's made questionable decisions as the manager of the Phillies too. So, and he did get his ring with the Yankees, but, you know, it's it's – it would have been hard not to after the offseason they had that year. Sabathia, Teixeira, and Burnett in one offseason and trading for Nick Swisher and, like, Damaso Martin. They had a monster offseason. You know, I mean, like, you could have been Billy Bob Thornton from the Bad News Bears, and I think he probably would have still won the World Series with the Yankees. Like, he could have just been a, a drunk in the dugout. Or <laughs> and they would have, I think they would have still won. That team was magical. It really was. Nayrod was magical that year. It's just, it all fell together. So, and that was awesome to see. Kiermaier, yeah. <clears throat> Kiermaier, he's, he's, he's a stud. He's a stud. Well, he's a stud. You know, they have a lot of these guys. I mean, this kid, Juan DeFranco, he's such a good-looking player. He's only 20, and he looks like a you know seasoned veteran. He's, he's, he's such a good player. And there's, it's easy to see why he was the number one prospect in all of baseball for a couple of years. He followed Joe Adele as the number one prospect. So it was Adele, and then once he got called up and moved on, <clears throat> it was Juan DeFranco. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just the Yan that's why I keep saying, Cherry, the Yankees need to add two frontline starters, no matter what this offseason. This has to be a Sabathia Burnett offseason. It has to be. And I, I'm hoping that it is. I mean, that's one reason they reset under the 210 million spot. So, um, <clears throat> they, they have to be aggressive, man. These other teams are going to be aggressive. You know, even if Toronto doesn't make it, they're going to be aggressive because they're so close. You know, Boston's going to be aggressive. I mean, Tampa Bay is really smart. And aggressive, and today, you know, they're going to be uh, very efficient with their moves. And who knows what Baltimore is going to do? But they have a lot of young, like Adley Rushman. They have some young uh, stud prospects coming up too. So I, I won't sleep on them just yet. But Seattle's going to be aggressive. You know, these teams are. The Angels will be aggressive. Two Pujols comes off the books, and then Upton comes off the books the following year. So they have almost fifty million cleared up in the next two years. So you know they're going to bring in somebody, especially with Trout coming back healthy and Otani, and <clears throat> you know they're going to come back. They're going to do something this offseason. They need pitching, but aside from that, they, they're they going to be aggressive. Um, <clears throat> change the rules, and we weren't able to because of the new rule. See, that sucks, Daily Dose. I mean, I know the Yankees kind of blew through some things a few years, and I'm not, I'm not sure if that rule was adopted because of that, but 
the same way that he came up through, through the Tampa system. And that's where I think Tampa's development is is superior, uh, player development is superior to the Yankees. So they both draft in the, they, they both draft in the back of the first round of each round, but Tampa's prospects they get, get more high end prospects. Now the Yankees recently over the last couple of years are getting that, but like Tampa, I think to me is just light years ahead of the Yankees in terms of overall player development. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. They have, I mean, guys like Juan de Franco are special, really are. That's why I hope Jason Dominguez, they do the right thing with him. I hope they do the right thing with Volpe. I hope they do you know, the right thing with Peraza, like Peraza and some of these other guys, Trey Sweeney and these kids that they've drafted recently. So um, I hope they continue to do the right things. It's really, really important. So, um, And Stanton is, to me, so Judge is a, I think Stanton's a better power hitter. Uh, than, than Judge. <clears throat> I think when he's hot, he's hotter than Judge. But Judge to me is kind of a probably a little bit better overall player. Um, but they're both stars, and I'm glad they had st- you know stud years. I'm really, I really am, and I hope them. Hopefully, both of them just annihilate the baseball tomorrow. Hopefully, both of them go yard, and I just hope the Yankees just beat the crap out of Tampa tomorrow because they have to. They have to. And even if even if Boston loses and they, they clinch today for some reason, I still think winning tomorrow is that much more important to give them a little bit more momentum going into the wild card game. You want to go in there feeling good, not feeling like, Oh God, we locked our asses in here. And like, you want them to have some kind of mojo or confidence going into this game. So today did not def- definitely did not help that. That's for sure. So they gotta, they gotta come back and, you know, <laughs> revamp, man. They really, really do. So yeah. High and bloom the same thing. Yeah, Heim Bloom, you know, brought like Dombrowski gutted the system after he got sale and a couple other guys, and then Heim Bloom's been kind of rebuilding the system again. And guys like Jeter Down, like they make those trades with the Dodgers and you know getting Jeter Down, like some of these other players. You know, Verdugo was a huge, a huge trade for the Dodgers, like for the Red Sox. That was a great trade. He turned he's a stud, absolute stud. You know, and you know, ben, I like Benintendi over in Kansas City too. He was an intriguing guy for the Yankees, Andrew Benintendi. Um, but Twins won and out of Nelson. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they did. And the Tampa Bay Rays, you know, they took advantage of it. And <clears throat> pay half a salary for – he's still – he's 41. He's hitting home runs left and right. He's, he's, you know, he's playing like a superstar. It's just good for him. Good for him. I'm very proud of him. I'm really, really happy for him. You know, playing down to lesser teams. I think, Brett, I mean, I think that's one of the – you make a good comment too. I mean, a good point, Brett Deutsch. I mean, like playing down to the lesser team. Yeah, they do. I mean, I think the Yankees should be, you know, striving again, like, to make things better. Anything they're not playing well, they need to, you know, make those adjustments while they're playing these teams. Like they have to be constantly striving to get better. It's a 162 game season, and I know it doesn't all happen overnight, but there has to be that feeling of, you know, consistency at some point with them, instead of so up and so down. And that's where I think you know. Adding some more quality players this year, more consistent players would be uh, would be helpful. But again, you know, yeah, Jordan Montgomery picked the worst time to have a bad game. It is what it is. We have to move on now. So it's one game. He's had a good year so far. So, and you know, same thing goes with Cole. He had a couple of couple of stinkers, but so did Robbie Ray. His last game against the Yankees when they beat him, he gave up five runs just like Cole did the day before. So he's the other contender for the Cy So it happens to these guys. It happens. And it's just you know, the Rays have the Yankees number, unfortunately. And they have had it for a while, and it's just this year is just, you know, having their number at the, at the right time. You know, and the timing thing comes into play, too. So, Dodgers fan, uh, Seager. I don't know if they're going to keep Seager. They have Trey Turner now, so where would they – what are they going to do with, with Corey Seager? Move him to second base? I mean, so he's going to get paid uh, one way or another. And don't be surprised if he goes, like I said, I mentioned the other day, too. And I know that Brandon – Crawford, he can go to the Giants. He can play second until, you know, Crawford's 34. It's good, but he's 34. He can go to the Angels. I mean, the Angels need a, a shortstop. Angelton Simmons is not going to be there forever. Actually, Simmons got moved, right? Yeah. So they need a shortstop. So I would I would look out for, you know, the A's and the Angels and the Giants, a lot of these West Coast teams. Um, <clears throat> they could all use a guy like, um, use a guy like Corey Seager. David Cohn would be kind of nice as a manager. Yeah, I like David Cohn, man. I've always liked him. I was lucky enough to be at his perfect game with mom, and that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. I mean, it really was a great, like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Being at a perfect game, it's nuts. 
And I've been at a couple of no hitters too on my side of the perfect games. We were really, really lucky as a fan. Really, really lucky. Um, I'm blessed for that. And I'm blessed to have my mom take me to all those games too. So I thank her for that a hundred times a day. So really, thank you, mom, if you're watching. <clears throat> and um, Glaber's, yeah, I mean, first base was occupied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mental errors, man. Mental errors, pinstripes. Yeah, it, it, these are the types of things. And the Yankees make way too many of these mental errors and just foolish things. And it's like, come on, man. This isn't Little League. This isn't the Fred Mucci League or M. Jack Little League or the ICYP. Like, come on, guys. Come on. It's far too many of these, these ridiculous mistakes. You know. The rabbit ball was put into Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be harder, Gerald, for a guy to hit 50 home runs. There'll be guys hitting in the 40s, you know. And, like, I mean, the Blue Jays have two on the team. Um, Sammy and Guerrero. And they have two other guys in over 25 and four dudes over 100 RBI. So, like, it happens. I mean, the Yankees have three guys at almost 40, Judge, Stanton, and Gallo. So Stanton's at 36, I think, Gallo 38, Judge 39. And uh, even though most of Gallo's home runs were at Texas, but they'll likely, very likely, be here all season next year. So and hopefully they'll be healthy. Gallo made a great defensive play in the outfield today. Really, really a great diving catch. No. Red Sox pitcher throwing a perfect game through five. Wonderful, Cherry. <laughs> God. Fantastic. This is just what we need. I hope it gets broken up and they lose. Like I really do. But this is it's it's gonna come down to tomorrow. It's, and, and you know, we're all gonna be at the edge of our seats. Tomorrow's live stream is just gonna we're gonna be like, what the fuck? I mean, if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out. I really would. You know, I'm gonna tell my wife to stop buzzing my head. I need something to pull out. So like <laughs> it's ridiculous. But the, yeah, I mean the Rays are the Rays are just a well put together team. Brett, yeah, you make good points, Brett. I mean, well, yeah, most definitely rooting for Seattle right now. Absolutely, hundred um, percent. I mean, you know, as a fan, yeah. I, I mean, I want Boston to lose, and I, I any, I want, I want there to be a scenario where the Yankees are not playing uh, Toronto in a wild card game. That would be a great scenario for me. So. And um, I just <laughs> I hope it doesn't turn out to be, but it, it, it's going to come right down tomorrow. We're all going to be stressed out tomorrow, one way or another. So it's going to be a fun live stream tomorrow, and um, we'll see. I mean, what time? Let's see what time the Yankees play tomorrow. Tomorrow they have. Uh, let's see if the pitching. Let's see if the pitching uh, lineup is up yet. Tomorrow they play <clears throat> Tampa at. Um, they play Tampa. Let's go Sunday. Scheduled. How do they play Tampa? It's not even on the schedule for some reason. Where is the schedule? Um, Yankees. I don't even see it on here in the schedule. What's going on here? Sunday, October. What the heck? Let's check out here. He says, even if we manage to eke into the playoffs, do you actually think they could go? Um, yeah, on a serious run. <sighs> Honestly, man, I mean, well, one big shout out, big shout out for Eddie, man. Everybody's give, give, give some W's some for Eddie's done. I appreciate that, Eddie Vassallo here. Good question, man. It's a really, really great question. I mean, I'm not very confident they go on a serious run. To be honest with you, Eddie. Um, I, I really, 3:05 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you, Daily Dose. Um, I'm not, I think if, if I'll say this, if they get through the, if they win the wild card and they have somehow beat Tampa in the ALDS, then I could see them going to the world series. But to me, it's all contingent upon them beating Tampa in the, in the wild card. I mean, in the, uh, the ALDS rounds, if they make it, they got to win the wild card game. And that's the only way I see them going on a run, Eddie. So that's a great question. What do you guys think? What, what you know, Eddie's question, he asked a good one. Do we think they, they can actually go on a run if they get in there? I mean, they're, they're streaky, so they can get hot and they can knock and they can get cold. So, um, but to me, the one condition upon them getting hot is them um, getting past Tampa because I think it'll resurrect their confidence levels big time and then essentially getting past the, the best team in the American League right there, being, being past. And I, if they do that, then I can see them beating either uh, uh, Houston or the White Sox. 
But it's, yeah, to me, it all boils down to freaking Tampa Bay, man. Tampa is just way too good. But yeah, I mean, it's a great question, Eddie. And Daly says it well too. Any chance in the playoffs has a chance of going all the way. He's absolutely right. They can, but I'm not that confident that it's going to happen. But again, not giving up on them until it's over. Like Yogi said, it's not over until it's over. So, but mathematically, it's becoming very difficult. And uh, uh, Brett, man, <clears throat> appreciate the donut. Shout out to Brett too. Let's give a lot of love to Brett D uh, Dietrich here. And um, our lineup, and Brett, Brett saying our lineup getting hot is the only chance we have to make a deep run. It starts and ends hundred percent, hundred percent. We need these guys to give our starters run support, right? And Brett Deutsch, excuse me. And um, <clears throat> thank you, Brett, man. I appreciate the dono. I appreciate everybody's donos. You guys are the best, man. And um, but he's he makes a great point, Brett. I mean, do you guys agree or gals agree with Brett? You know, if our lineup getting hot, it's is one of the pretty much only chance we have to make a deep run. The pitchers can keep us in the game, but our bats have to put us over the offense. And look who we have to play. Like you play in Toronto, the bats have to be there. You play in Tampa, the bats have to be there. Playing Houston, the bats have to be there. So no matter who we play right now, even if it's Seattle, the bats have to be there. It has to. You can't get you know, you can't be a one nothing game every time. It just can't. You know. And I agree too, Gerald. If Cole pitches tomorrow, then the Yankees have a little bit of a slimmer chance of winning round one. I agree. And, to, and, and again, well, it's, it's yeah because he wouldn't be pitching the you know the wild card tomorrow's not the wild card game. If he pitches tomorrow, then he's not pitching the wild card game either. So, and that's that's the tough. I mean, that's the tough spot. And Cherry makes another good point. They, they trade the race traded Snell and Morton, and Glasnow went down, and they got better. Like, and this is how good they are. I mean, it's just ridiculous, you know. And, and yeah, and I think Q, QB makes a good point too. QB did a little bit like he. We already got hot. Like I think we got hot a little too soon. That's unfortunate, but it's 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 a, it's a very accurate depiction of the team right now. So, but I think if the Giants play the Rays in the World Series, I think the Giants win. I do as well. Um, if the Dodgers play the Rays in the World Series somehow, I could see the Rays beating the Dodgers. Um, I could see the Cardinals um, beating the Rays though in the World Series, but it's going to be really hard to knock the Rays off in the American League. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I see Houston or Chicago beating them to the World Series. I just I, I don't see it. I don't see it, but I hope I'm wrong. Um, yeah, Morton signed with the, the the Braves as a free agent. And he's already re up for 2022 as well, Charlie Morton. So he was with the Braves this year. Tampa, yeah, exactly. Tampa lost Tyler Glasnow. I, I, I think it's Tommy John, if I'm not mistaken, um, but he's hurt. And um, it's, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunate. And you, Elvis, yeah, I mean, my guess it'll be Tyon for a couple, Sevy for a couple, Holmes for a couple, Lasagna for a couple. That's I, that's probably that's probably an accurate prediction. Um, yeah, and the Rays have, like, heisted a lot of teams, man. They definitely robbed San Diego. They got the best out of that trade. It's like the Rays are brilliant at making trades, man. They really look at the Chris Archer trade. Who they got? They got the kid today, Baz. They got like <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. They fleece so many teams. It's so, and that's good development, good management, man. Really, really good. Good front office. Really smart people. So, and the bullpen can carry us. Daily dose, one hundred percent, man. That they can carry us. Um. The other team, the rest of the team generally doesn't hit when they're not hitting. So, and that's, the, you know, it's, it's, they are kind of the lifeline of the team's offense. I mean, they really, really are moving over here because the connection is getting suspect. So they're the lifeline of the team's offense. I mean, you get like Gallo can hit, Rizzo can hit, but if Stanton and Judge are cold, it kind of makes the rest of the offense cold. So, and that's unfortunate. It really, is. but, um, Tommy John for Glasnow. Yep. That's right, Gerald. Thank you. But, um, yeah, Austin Meadows, Bay, and Glasnow, like, for, for Arthur, like, oh, my God. My God. Brilliant trade, man. Brilliant freaking trade. Got to give it to Tampa Bay's front office, man. Smart-ass people. Smart-ass people. So, and they'll keep doing it. They'll keep making trades like this and keep getting better. And the payroll still is going to – will still remain low. So, smart, man. Very, very efficient with their money and very, very efficient with their players and developing great prospects. So, but – you know, but I, I mean, would I be surprised if we saw Cole tomorrow? No, but I'm really hoping he stays. I hopefully hope they get through tomorrow so he can pitch a wild card game. But 
we'll see. But I want to thank you all for coming. And, um, you know, as always, let's go enjoy our night. Let's go have a, a nice hearty dinner and maybe a beverage or so and uh, <laughs> enjoy it. But thank you. You are the best. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk about some good news tomorrow. So have a great night, guys. Over and out. Thank, and again, thank you so much for the donos. Very greatly appreciated. Thank <laughs> you.